Every village has its idiots. Loch Arbert in Scotland had three. And they were brothers three who lived together under a wooden frame pulled over with coats and left on the shore by four messages known in these parts as tinkers. They were part of the scenery, the only inhabitants of the shore, the only stragglers on Main Street during a downpour. They knew the history of Loch Arbut, not the kind to be found in books, but who had slipped into the lives of whom and when. Which farmer's tup had got into a field of another farmer's ewes? Whose baby had been fathered by someone else? In these things, the brothers were as dependable as the standing stones left behind in the fields around Loch Arbert by druids. The older inhabitants of Loch Arbert could put a lineage to these three, but for most folk they were simply Murdo, Donal, and Dooley. Like the tinkers they replaced, the brothers seldom bathed or carried out any other ablutions. In all weathers they wore army coats whose buttons had long since been replaced by string. In the colder months, the brothers wore newspapers inside their coats. In summer, which in this rural part of the world barely counts as the warm season, they rolled back their sleeves on unwashed arms. The brothers were not triplets, so they didn't look alike. Murdo was balder than the other two, but they were all small in stature, all round-faced and round-bellied, all more gum than tooth. So before anybody else, the brothers knew the American was coming to Loch Arbert and how he was going to be staying with Mrs. McFeely. Because they knew the entire history of her family, the McNaughts, and they knew that the American was a far off relative. They knew that in the distance they were related to this man too, but he didn't know that and they knew that he didn't. They lived like tinkers, and, and the name Hollywood or even California belonged in their minds to the same nebulous zone inhabited by handless pipers or the grey ladies who haunted certain, certain bridges in the woods beyond the town. History tells of the Druids of Kintyre, though not the history handed out to the children of Loch Arbut in books. John Knox and the Reformation had forged their path there sanctifying only the Christians and damning to hell this land of godless pagans. The Christians in their pews were afraid of the stone circles that had been set in line with the rising sun and of the Gallic tongue which had once been spoken here about and still was by farmers. Steve McNaught, the American, couldn't know about these goings on, coming as he was to seek asylum from the money race and, li and a life turned sour. He was looking for something simpler, something closer to heaven in the backwaters of Scotland. Much as a person in a dream comes upon Brigadoon swathed in Scottish mist, Steve McNaught had come by the belief that this rural town on the west coast of Scotland, whence his ancestors hailed, would be the salve he needed to ease the kind of wounds only a successful career in Hollywood could inflict. Me.